Good afternoon, and thank you for attending Stroudwater's 30-minute webinar today. My name is Keith Bubble, and I will be keeping us organized. Uh, John Bain and Dan Given will be facilitating today's presentation. At the completion of this webinar, a link to the presentation and a recording will be made available uh, and will be emailed to you. In the interest of time, questions can be directed to the presenters after the presentation has ended using the contact information available on the final slide, or you can type a question in the chat box and we'll get back to you after the presentation. Since we have a large group today, all lines will be muted. This is the second of three webinars we will be hosting related to your price list. Uh, previously, we hosted webinar A, which dealt with the most common CDM errors we have found when dealing with CDMs. Uh, that is available on our website, stroudwater.com, under the resources slash webinar tab. Uh, it's called Chargement, Charge Master Fundamentals. Today's will focus on the impact of pricing levels and strategies on net revenue. And we're going to review topics such as charging for supplies, handing off Medicare copays, budget, coding, and documentation. In addition to today's webinar, we will be hosting webinar C, which is how to allocate decision rights, monitor performance, and set initiatives. That will show you how to develop systems for accountability and transparency with an emphasis on establishing pricing accountability and charge master integrity throughout your hospital. So please be sure to mark your calendars for that. Uh, with that, I'll now turn it over to John Bain. John? Well, thank you, Keith. Um, welcome, everybody. Uh, thanks for taking a couple of minutes out of your uh, very busy schedules to talk about something that I think is um, certainly critical to the financial viability and uh, customer service of every organization that's out there. Um, so a lot of hospitals come out and say, you know, wh why, you know, because we've always looked at pricing from the perspective of something that we don't really want to talk about to uh, today's environment where pricing is omnipresent. Um, you know, patients are just becoming so much more educated on the impact of pricing and ultimately the perceived value of the service. I mean, before, you know, we had for years and years and years, the complexity of the revenue cycle and the complexity of, of the payment structure was such that, you know, it, it gave patients pause. They weren't quite sure how to handle things. Now, you know, with the, the advent of the higher co-pays and the higher deductibles, almost all services in a way have some root in patient payment. So the payers are doing a better job at educating. Uh, and now we've got the pro problem where patients are presenting themselves to our institutions with uh, a higher knowledge base and what they're doing is, is it's in a way creating anxiety throughout the organization because you have people in your organization now that are fielding questions and comments on prices that historically has never happened. I mean, we, we talk with uh, radiology techs and lab techs and PT folks uh, who, while they're performing the treatment or doing the exam, questions start coming up about how much does this cost? What do you think my responsibility is going to be? And we've got these, these folks who really want to be empathetic to these, these patients. They just don't have good answers. So, you know, the majority of hospitals that are out there really, really have a difficult time meeting the expectations of patients who show up who really want clear, concise, and correct answers to their questions, and it's all about money now. So one of the things that we want to make sure of is, you know, but since the tide has kind of turned from a patient perspective, there, there's really no reason why we shouldn't look at our pricing within our hospital as sort of a competitive advantage rather than a competitive disadvantage. We really want our hospital to uh, embrace those questions, have, you know, results and, and queries and responses scripted ahead of time so that patients feel as though you're really, really in control of the mechanics of providing the service. The way that we always look at it now is that, you know, patients are now equating the clinical care and the business side of operations equally, and they demand the same level of quality and uh, information to come back, which is a challenge really to most hospitals. Next slide, please. So one of the things that has added a little bit to the anxiety there is, is that whole pricing transparency piece that came back through December and January and is still kind of going through the industry and you know every hospital has a different way of looking at it and presenting the data the truth be told 
right now, you know, most hospitals from a pricing transparency standpoint, you know, are, are, have put information out to uh, the public. And what we're finding is, is that the majority of, of inquiries into those files really is not aimed at the patient. It's really more at the payer level and the media. So what we really want to make sure of is that, you know, there is this, this misnomer out there that pricing transparency only applies to a certain subset of hospitals. Uh, re in reality, it applies to all, and we need to make sure that we've got a good um, a response to that and that we are prepared to be able to show our services in such a way that doesn't really add confusion, but it most importantly provides resources and links directly to your hospital. You know, if you've got a really great financial counselor or a really good business office director, you know, in order to get to your pricing file to satisfy, you know, those transparency needs, you should really embed as many local contact spots as possible so that you're not letting patients get to uh, an answer on their own. You're really driving it so that the answers can provide it so that there can be color commentary around that and that you can give and kind of make sure that the answers that are given to your patients reflect their situation. So pricing transparency, I think you've got to keep your eyes open. There's going to be more and more on that. They're, they're really starting to look at and trying to eliminate the gray within uh, the regs. I mean, when you look at the regs, everything's gray. Um, they're really trying to make it so that there's, there's more borders around the, the requirements. So keep your eye on it, but use the pricing transparency regulations as an opportunity to take control of your pricing. I think that's, that's what we've been talking with, and a lot of hospitals have really embraced that and started to change their culture just surrounding pricing. Next slide, please. So one of the things that compounds the pricing transparency is that, you know, in most hospitals that we dealt, and we've dealt with hundreds and hundreds of hospitals, and there's consistent themes that go throughout. And a lot of times there is a, a difficulty within the organization to have a very concise conversation internally amongst departments, administration, and externally with patients surrounding the methodology that's used to establish the prices. And when that happens, there is uh, you know, a break in the conversation where patients start to look at it and doubt that you're in control. And you know, the lack of, of clarity that's in there really you know, prohibits consistency in your, your process. But ultimately, we're talking about best class customer service, right? So patients are showing up not only to receive the clinical care, but they also want to know, you know, I've got a $10,000 deductible. I'm having this CT today. I just want to know what I'm at risk for. So before they just showed up and had the exam and moved on, now they're looking at this as almost everything is a retail conversation. So we need to make sure that we've got the policies and the procedures in place so that as those questions come about, there are answers that can be provided, and it can't be, you know, we'll follow up with you. I mean, we really want to be able to get these things quickly, okay? Additionally, you know, a lot of the contracts, and this is becoming a little, you know, less prevalent as the payers are trying to do things, but there's a lot of, you know, commercial contracts that have lesser of language in the payer contract, which really basically means that, you know, we would pay you 100 bucks, but if you charge me 50, I'm going to pay the lesser of, so they pay you 50. As crazy as that sounds, the majority of hospitals that we deal with actually have this as an issue. And this is something that di directly contributes to lower cash, uh, lower gross revenue, non-representative budgets. So it's an important piece that as you are looking at your pricing strategy, that you're incorporating your contracts, you understand the playing field that you're playing on. Okay, so a patient-centric and defensible pricing methodology, which are two huge pieces, all right? So you're looking at pricing through the patient's eyes and have the ability to defend what you're doing because you're confident that you're, you're meeting all of the expectations and needs, okay? It's an absolute requirement for really appropriate reimbursement, representative budgets, and best class customer service. I think the most important piece that, you know, historically we've not worried about is pricing in the relationship to customer service. Now they're really one-on-one -on -one, and hospitals are losing patients because they do not equate how they price things and how they bill things with how satisfied the customer is from a business relationship. Next, please. 
So when you go through and you, and you take a look at, and clarity from a pricing standpoint really starts with policy and procedure, okay? It, it really is going through and saying, okay, we now have the ability to hit the reset button, and we believe that we're in control of our pricing, okay? So when we do that, we always see an increase in gross, we see improved customer service, and we absolutely see more consistent account adjudication, better value of the AR, better uh, identification of your adjustments. I mean, the whole thing starts working well. Why? Pricing is a central foundational component of your revenue cycle, right? So we need to make sure that that's in control. So recently we did some work with four large uh, critical access hospitals and we looked at 57 of their departments, okay? And all of them had CPT assignments. So you think they're ER, they're OR, they're RAD, they're you know, MRI, CT, such like that, okay? Of the 57 departments, a full 56%, okay, and all of these are critical access hospitals, had prices in their charge master that were set lower than what Medicare would reimburse. It was a shocking revelation to the C-suite, okay? Additionally, you know, when we looked at another 16 departments or 28% of them were lower than two times Medicare. When, when we go through and we have conversations with the C-suite and we try to, especially in critical access, trying to equate the cost of the service with the charge of the service, when they go through, and, and usually the cost side of things, you know, you guys get that nailed because, you know, you're, you're watching, you know, dimes like they're manhole covers, right? So we, we get the costs really well defined. We never find that they come back to us and say, oh, yeah, you know, the price of providing this service is one times Medicaid. It's never. It's always three, four, five, okay? So these hospitals have a huge component of the charges that they're providing were lower than the cost of providing the services. An additional part, 62%, almost 62% had prices set higher than five times Medicare. And two of these hospitals had a massive problem with leakage out of CT and MRI. Their high-priced MRIs, patients were leaving those facilities, finding better services from a pricing standpoint. The quality was the same, but they decided to move from a pocketbook standpoint. So these are things that we need to make sure that the pricing and the revenue cycle is not getting in the way of the business operations and the patient satisfaction. So, you know, this, you know, result that we had from these four are repeated across time and time and time again. So it is something to consider. It is something to be cognizant of. And it's a very important piece as you're starting to go and control your financial viability. Next, please. So when we start looking at these, there's, there are a very organized series of steps that you can take to really do two things. One, control your pricing, and two, have the ability for you to hit the reset button and say, as a CEO, a CFO, or whoever it might be, that, I, that the pricing policy that we have currently is mine. I own it. I'm in control. What we often find is that people are operating using somebody else's system. It, you know, the, it, the charge master is always the thing where it's a black hole. Where things go in, they never come out. And if we made a mistake two years ago, chances are we haven't looked at it, and all it's done is perpetuate itself and gotten bigger, right? So we need to make sure that we've got a baseline for our fee schedules and our pricing. So we need to have a good comparison, whether it's Medicare, whether it's Blue Cross, whether it's United. You need to make sure that you've got something that you have the ability to compare, okay? We need to be sure that if you do have the ability at the CPT level, and Blue Cross can give you that along with Medicare and along with, say, United or Aetna, you incorporate as many of those things at the modality level as possible because you want as many data points and touches as possible. Okay? Likewise, the days of the one multiplier three times whatever or 3% markup across every department really has gone away. What really needs to happen in order for you to be competitive, you need to be able to look at your pricing at the departmental or modality level. So that really means that instead of playing checkers, you're playing four-dimensional chess. You know, you know that you have a higher cost structure, say in CT and MRI and ER, than you do in, say, diagnostic rad and ultrasound. So you may want to be setting four and five times Medicare or Blue Cross at the MRI level and three times in ultrasound. So you wanna give yourself flexibility, okay? You wanna make sure that you're identifying outliers, you know, so that if you do have codes that are really highly priced, 
identify what they are. You don't want to react quickly. You want to have everything informed. And again, going back to a policy and procedure thought process. Okay? You want to make sure that if you have the ability to incorporate the utilization, get that into your pricing analysis. See how often you use things. Most charge masters are too big in our non-representative current service provision. So a lot of times we'll see that only 30% of the available codes are actually used. Either the charge master is too big or our revenue capture is not sufficient. So you wanna make sure that you incorporate that. Again, it's another data point, okay? Make sure that you develop those policies and procedures. And importantly too, work for your organization. Identify the people who are responsible for setting the prices and also communicating those prices. Don't hide pricing internally have those conversations educate people everywhere that you can make sure that the points of contact whether it be your radiology techs your lab uh, pt er nurses they've got a good answer when people come and ask questions i've got a wonderful person named sally who's in my financial cut she'll be more than happy to walk through all these things you know so give good responses understand and script these questions you know they're coming make sure that people are prepared prior to those questions being asked, okay? So a lot of hospitals don't do that, but it is hugely valuable just to create those talking points, to make sure that if a question gets asked, you get consistent answers, that you're going to the right people, and you're making sure that there's confidence at the departmental level that when these questions are asked, appropriate answers are given, okay? And ultimately, this is not a one-time looking at things, right? So we want to make sure that if you take the time to go and hit the reset button, take control of your pricing, we realize that the culture in most hospitals want to go back to where they were because where you are today is comfortable and change is difficult. So there, there's this pull always to go backwards and do things where things were comfortable. The way that you prevent that is by regularly examining it, having that as a point of uh, conversation and you should always be looking at it and, and I really believe that the pricing standpoint in your charge master needs to be really looked at almost quarterly to make sure that you are maintaining that competitiveness that you're not allowing any type of issues to creep back in so um, with that how about this I'm gonna hand this off to Dan so he can kind of walk through some of the other uh, issues and conversation all right thanks John yeah, so in our last webinar, we spoke a little bit about some high-level indicators of potential issues with your CDM, and we're just going to briefly touch on that today. So we talk, um, moving on, we're going to, today we're really actually going to focus mainly on actually setting prices and looking at different data elements that are out there in the marketplace and external to your hospital to help you guide and set a specific markup for a department as John discussed. And then once again, we're going to talk just a little bit about and show how this tool can be used to comply with Secretary Azar's rule um, goal of increasing price transparency of prices, along with some of his other um, initiatives to push for a value-based care transformation within the healthcare industry. And that's kind of through our export feature of the pricing tool to where you can export a machine-readable uh, uh, pricing schedule, but also avoid giving out too much information for your competitors. So with that, we're just going to jump right into the tool and log in. And from there, as you may recall from the previous webinar, this is the pricing dashboard that you actually land on when you log into the tool, and it identifies some of the common issues that you can find within a CDM. This is not to say that it is all-inclusive of all issues that may arise from potentially codes that are lacking within your CDM or codes that you need to add in your CDM, but it does show several of the common issues, such as prices that are currently below or charges that are currently below the Medicare fee schedule. Um, you can also see where your distribution of charges are, are for a particular department. So if we are to select emergency room, we can see what the markup factor is and where they fall 
within that markup factor, whether they're four times Medicare allowable charge or two times Medicare allowable charge. Also, we identify duplicate codes uh, that have a different price. Missing CPT or HCPCS codes from description. So if there's um, lines entered in the CDM that are missing a CPT or HCPCS code, then that is identified. Also, any invalid CPT or HCPCS code, so codes that are no longer no longer recognized, and also any missing descriptions. So you want descriptions with your codes as they may come on show up on a patient bill, and they help um, users select the correct code. So that was what we kind of spoke about in the last webinar, and that's available online. Um, and if you e email us, we can uh, send you a link to that webinar. But uh, for today's purpose, we're going to jump in and focus mainly on the price check feature. The price check fe feature really is designed to take a look at, number one, your internal hospital price, and then take a look at external pricing, such as other hospitals and also what the fee schedules, whether it be the APC or Medicare fee schedule um, prices or allowable charge is. So for today's purpose, we're gonna, gonna stick to um, a common code 99282. Here in the e ER, we're gonna, we kind of love to pick on the emergency room. And when we enter that code, it shows here our current price at our hospital in the emergency room which is from our, our charge master that we uploaded into the database. And it also shows some external information. So this is information that is pulled from the AMA description of the CPT code and also shows the APC price and the Medicare fee schedule price or, uh, as well. Um, if we scroll on down, as John talked about, it's really important to help um, to begin setting a pricing strategy throughout the hospital and really push that down to all different levels of the organization. And this is a feature. So if, if, it, if we find in the emergency room that we need to mark up our prices at about three times a Medicare allowable charge, we can do so. Just put in the three X. We know what the um, that price is going to be. We can update our CDM based on that policy that has been put in place in the organization. And then down below here, we have um, currently about 50 different uh, charge masters uploaded. So if you are curious about where other pr prices or where the median price is falling for other hospitals, you can compare your price, um, which is here, the $124 to different, um, to the aggregated uh, group of um, your peer hospitals um, and see where they fall, whether it be the 25th percentile median, um, where your hospital falls, where the 2019 fee schedule um, is, and also the 75th percentile, just to kind of give a confirmation of whether you might be on the higher end or, or lower end of your charge. But it really is dependent on what your strategy as a unique individual hospital needs to be. Um, additionally, we um, have an export feature here that actually will allow us to export our CDM in electronic uh, readable format. Uh, we can jump here. And we have it set up so we don't actually include the CPT or revenue code just because it really doesn't do the user if, who is really aimed at the consumer any good to know that information. And it's just a, um, a feature that other competitors might use to, to, to grab your data. So you're able to export this in Excel um, or a CSV file or PDF if you prefer, but machine readable would be the CSV and Excel file. So jumping back uh, to the pricing tool, um, it's really a feature that you can allow to, uh, as many users as you want to access the tool, so that way they do have a means to see what the pricing is out there in the industry, look up your own pricing, or if they need to add codes, at least have a basis of where they need to start with a base price and then apply a markup feature based on your policies and procedures. So um, 
it's a tool to help you get to a point where you can feel more comfortable about your charge master. So with that, I will uh, turn it back over to Keith. All right, thank you, John and Dan, and uh, thank you all online for joining us. This marks the end of our presentation. Please remember to mark your calendars for our next webinar. That will be Friday, May 24th at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And again, a recording of our first webinar in this series is available on our website, stroudwater.com, under the resources and then webinar tab uh, under a series called Charge Master Fundamentals. Uh, once again, this presentation will be emailed to you shortly after we close here. And you can direct any questions or comments to the contact info that can be found on the last page. Um, we appreciate your time and uh, have a good afternoon.